Hey everybody, what's up? Today I wanna to talk about some beginner tips to keep in mind as you're getting into Summoner's War. I wanna give the same disclaimer that I gave in the last video. I'm an, I'm an old school player, recently returning. I know a lot of things have changed, so I may miss something that is important or you know, put more emphasis on something that's not so important anymore. So if, if you have anything to add or any corrections you wanna make, Drop them in the comments below. Don't flame me about it. <laughs> it's not going to change anything. Uh, but if you have anything you'd like to add to it that you think would be helpful, please drop it in the comments below. I, I will be interested in hearing them, and I'm sure the other viewers will as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. <clears throat> the first incredibly important piece of advice I want to give, kind of obvious, but I want to go ahead and say it anyway. Do your daily missions every every day. It is very important that you do your daily missions. It was important back in the day. It's even more important now because now you get transcendent scroll pieces. You get two every day that you do your dailies. When you get 300, you'll have a transcendent scroll. A transcendent scroll is a guaranteed nat five. You can't get, you can't get anything less than a nat five with a transcendent scroll. So basically just by logging in and doing your daily missions, you're gonna earn yourself a nat five. Uh, so, so do your dailies every day. You don't have to do everything on the list either. You just have to accumulate 100 points here it tells you how many points you're getting so you can usually you know i'm at 80 if i do any one of these i'm done for the day i don't have to do all three of these so just go through do your dailies every day you can get them done really quick honestly it's uh it's it's very easy to do and more important than ever to do them so that's number one number two again another kind of obvious one but i feel like i even was a little bit guilty of deviating a little bit from this and it ended up costing me some efficiency. Uh, let these let these Summoner's Way missions guide you. Go go th make sure that whatever you're doing is something you can check off in here. Like make sure, try try to always do the active mission because I kind of broke away after I got my, my Water Magic Knight, for example. I tried to break away a little bit and go farm man. It's a long way to the beginning. Uh, and go farm her some water essences so I could go ahead and get her awakened and try to make a little bit of food. If I had just trusted the missions to guide me through, they give you the essences to awaken her. They give you the food to six star her. They give you a few skill ups for her. They give you they give you everything that you need to get your water magic night going, as well as some other valuable champs and some really valuable resources. There's lots of scrolls and essences and food and lots of stuff in here. So, so even into it intermediate now, try to make sure that you hit a wall here before you start to branch out and do other things because you might be unnecessarily putting resources into something. Like for me, it was water essences. I spent way too much time doing that when a few missions later, it was just gonna give them to me. So so let the progression missions especially guide you. Come in here and check all these as well. There's, there's really easy ways. You can get really good champs just by checking strategy info in all the dungeons. It's gonna give you a champ that's usable in the dungeon, okay? Uh, and and it's really good about it. Giants Keep, you get Shannon, who is amazing. I talked about her in the last video. Uh, Dragon Dungeon, you get Lulu, who is also amazing. Necro, you get Colleen. You get really good champs for these dungeons and for other things. So come in here and, and just check all these and make sure you're staying on top of them, okay? I need to go get my Colleen, <laughs> but I haven't done it yet. Uh, so those are two really important tips. Another one I think it's easy to overlook, but it's crucial that you do this. Lock your champions. You see, you see a lot of my champions have little locks on them. That means I can't use them as food unless I come in here and unlock them. And you might think, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to make that mistake. I promise you, at some point you will. There's no reason not to come in here and lock your monster. So you, you click the monster, you go settings, make sure that's checked, and click change. So if, I, if we unlock her, you see we lose the lock. We go back and do it again. We get the lock. Lock your champions. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people accidentally feed a champ. It, it happens all the time, and especially now with some of the quality of life that they've added, where you've got uh, let's 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 pick someone. You've got autofill. You, you're gonna you're gonna feed a champ <laughs> if you don't lock it. You're gonna screw up. I've heard of people feeding light dark map fives. I've heard some real horror stories about that. There's no reason not to lock them. You lock them once, they're locked forever. You're done. So make sure that you do that, okay? Very important. Another very important thing is in the arena, if you are not a big PvP player, you've got your list of rivals here. that You can do every day they go on cooldown. And then you've got Amir, who in my experience never goes on cooldown, and he seems to level up with you. So you'll have teams 
so far they've all been pretty easy but he seems to level up with you and he has different teams every time i fight him so i get a look at different champs uh so he seems like pretty good practice for the arena but if you if you're not real big into it into doing the battles against other people you've got your rivals where you can earn these glory points okay it's important that you do them one because it's part of your dailies but two because you're going to be getting these glory points these 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 down here and in the shop there's some pretty good stuff in here the really important one is the devil mon the, your your weekly devil mon this is a skill up that needs to really be reserved for nat fives there are some nat fours that that you could justify using them on but for the most part you want to hang on to these for your nat fives it can be kind of hard to come by right they're, they're pretty valuable but you can get one a week from in here for like 180 glory points so you don't need a ton but you want to make sure that you're doing enough arena to get those points and you want to make sure you're buying this devil mine every week because again very valuable that's four a month so uh, beyond that there's scrolls and some other stuff in here but uh, either way you want to make sure you're doing that even if you're not really into the actual pvp side of it they give you a list of rivals you can come in here and get your gems and glory points and stuff like that every day all right so make sure you're doing that very important another one I don't remember if the game ever specifically tells you, and Summoner's War, to my knowledge, at least in my experience, is the, is the only game that, that still does it this way. <sighs> and this, the first part I'm going to say is kind of familiar. Using duplicate champions to uh, level up a champion. If you feed a duplicate to itself, you'll get a skill up. So if I have, for example, and, and it works cross elements. So like, let's say I'm, I'm building Randy and he needs levels. If I use him to give him experience, he'll get experience and a skill up. The part that is Summoner's War exclusive is if I use him to rank him up. So if I, if I throw him in as the food to rank him up, it'll still count as a skill up. So in some ways you can really take advantage of this. For example, if you wanted to build the Fire Inugami, who is a farmable champion from Feymon, you'll get a lot of copies of him because this is where you're going to be farming your experience when you're running your food. Uh, you're going to get a lot of Inugami drops. You can you can level your Inugami up to max level at 3-star, use three other Inugamis to skill him up, and then you can take other Inugamis you get, rank them up into 4-stars, and then use them to 5-star your main Inugami and get a ton of skill ups and it's all from scratch you're not using any rainbow mon you're not using any other food champs you can do it all from here and everything can be that efficient you know what i mean so you rank up food dupes also count as skill ups and and a lot of other games don't do that for some reason but that's really important to know you can really make the most of that especially with two star champs you're going to be getting a lot of those from your unknown scrolls and then from the shop you can buy some pretty nice two stars use them as rank up food, turn them into leveled up rank up food for higher level rank up food, and you'll get your skill ups in the same motion. It's, it's very efficient, very efficient way to do it, right? Moving on, the game has several different storage modes. Storage boxes, I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, I guess storage boxes. So you've got your main champion roster, right? And then you've got your standard storage you put whatever you want in here any any monsters in the game you can put in here and you can expand it every time you expand it it's going to be 200,000 mana or 50 crystals it's not going to stair step up and uh, how expensive it is the further you go it's always going to cost this to add 10 slots to it until you max it out i don't know what the max is but it's way way up there way way up there i don't think you're ever going to have a problem <laughs> with with storage okay so that's the that's the main storage like the regular storage here, you've got a an enhancing monster storage. So it's all your food, all your rainbow mon, your experienced ones. You can put devil mons in here. Uh, anything that's a food monster specifically, basically, right? And which I, I need to go ahead and put them in there. Actually. And then you have something called the sealed monster shrine. And any monster that's in its base form and not locked, you can put in here. So. If they haven't been awakened, if they don't have any levels in them and you haven't locked them, you can put them in here and they just stack. And as far as I know, there's no limit. So again, th this can be where you put a lot of the champs that you're gonna wanna hang on to for food. Don't honestly like this, move these two in there. And I'm hanging on to y'all as well. 
So this can be rank up, other rank up food, skill up food, things of that nature, or champs that you just want to let sit until you work, get your way around and building them. However you want to organize it all is up to you, but I think it's important to be familiar that these options are, are there. I didn't know this one existed. This one is new to me. Uh, the, the, the food storage one I remember, it, it was relatively new when I stopped playing, I think, and then this one's the one that's always been here, okay? So it's important to understand those and, and what the differences are. When you are checking out your monsters, obviously there's a lot of monsters in the game. It can be very overwhelming. Uh, there's a lot of rune sets, there's a lot of stats, there's a lot of different ways to build. It can all be a lot, right? Especially if you're newer to the genre. It can be a lot to think about. So one thing you can do, it, it has an auto engrave system, which I've been kind of testing out. So far it's been doing pretty good, a pretty good job. It's been putting good sets, good stats. It seems to be focusing the right things. So the auto engrave seems like it works pretty well, all right? Beyond that, you can click this button right here and get some information about the particular monster. You can switch their elements from here. You can go to a debate, and once you once you work your way through all of these bullshit comments, um, you might get an actual review. Sometimes there's actually good reviews, and sometimes it's just a bunch of this nonsense. Um, and you can click their name. See, they don't even have the monster. I feel like you shouldn't get to rate a monster you haven't maxed. Um, but anyway, you can click their name and see their monster and how it's built. But now they've added this where you can see what percentage of players are using which, like what are the popular rune sets? Vampire Revenge is obviously, that's, that's the set of gear it's gonna give you for her. It's obviously the way to go. Beyond that, you can go to property slot two, four and six. And the reason those are the only ones you can do is because those are the ones that have variables. One, three, and five are always going to be attack, defense, and HP. Two, four, and six are where you can get your variations. So you can come in here and see uh, most people like attack, slot two. Most people like crit damage, slot four. Most people like attack, slot six. Okay, so you can get some real good information. You can see where they are popular, like where they're being used. You can see Faemon is <laughs> very, very high on the list. Uh, Arena, she's apparently good in Rift, right? So you can, you can get some information like that. And uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess you can look at the ones that your friends have built too, which is pretty cool. So a lot of this is new to me, but I think it's really handy. I think it really removes a lot of the uh, stress of trying to figure all this out. You can see what people are, are commonly doing and then the longer you play the game, the more you'll get familiar with how everything works and what all the stats are and sets are and start to do a little bit of, uh, you know, your own creative type building. But this is a good way to just kind of figure out what's working for everyone else and apply it to your account until you're ready to start doing that. OK. Uh, another thing while we're here on runes is uh, there's a multi power up system. So let's find a couple that I want to power up. This one is good. So if I go into power up, I'll go auto power up. I'll take it to 12. I can now close this and it's going to keep powering it up and then I can pick another rune and have it start powering up and I can close that and then I can go, you know, to another set and you can set a queue for powering up runes. You don't have to sit and wait till it's done to go to the next rune. That's that's also a new feature. Incredibly lovely though because the animation does take a little bit but now you don't have to sit and watch it. You can minimize it and it'll level up all the runes you put in the queue and it's very, very handy. One last thing about runes while we're here is the, is the rune sorter. This is a very, very solid rune sorting system. Up here, you can pick which set you want to see, or you can see all your sets. You can see if you want to see all your speed main stat runes, that's going to be slot two because it's the only place that's possible. If you want to see substats here, you can check them that way. If you only want to see slot one runes, you can gray all the other ones out and only see slot one. You know what I mean? Uh, you can temporarily apply a rune to someone, and then if you want to take it, you can see the, the stat changes you're going to get here. You can hit apply to take it, or uh, you can remove it temporarily. We're just going to back out so it doesn't keep the change, but... Yeah, what do you mean incomplete rune info? I didn't hit... Um... Yeah, there... I don't know what that was about. I don't know why it's doing that. Um... <laughs> I don't know how to reset that. But anyway, it's a it's a great way to filter your runes when it's time to do some some spring cleaning. This is a great way to, to see what all you've got going on. 
up here it just let me know that all my rune power-ups have ended so uh, I can go in and check out how they rolled if I wanted to and all of that but anyway it's, it's a good idea to be familiar with with all of this stuff okay and you'll get more familiar with it as you go along uh, next up let's talk real quick about farmable monsters I meant I mentioned the fire Inugami who is known as Rauk uh, from Feymon up here you can go drop info and see who all can drop so from here we can get Inugami it's a good idea to come in and look because there's a couple of really, really good champs that you can farm. So let, let's actually go through real quick and take a look, because I don't remember exactly where they, where you get them all from. Water War Bear can be interesting. Where are we at? I think Taymor is where you get Bernard. Uh, here you can get Howls if you want to farm some, if, you, if you're not getting enough from scrolls. I imagine you'll get enough from unknown scrolls, but uh, here's a big one. Uh, Bernard is the Wind Griffin. He's excellent. The Wind Serpent is also pretty good. This is a great place to come and farm. And you can do the same thing. You can get your copy of Bernard, get him to level 25, use three more that you farmed, skill him, uh, rank him up to four star, also get skill ups, then do the same thing. You know, take take four of them up to four star, use them to five star your main one, get more skill ups. But these two champs are really, really good. Bernard especially is, is really, really good. Um... Fire Elemental is really good. I didn't. I don't think I knew Fire Elemental was farmable. We know Rauk. Some of these champs might be good now too. I don't know. When War Bear's fun, but yeah. So so Faemon and Tamor Desert for sure are good places to farm for those champs because there's a couple of, of really solid champs in there. Um, drop rate is kind of low. But not really. I think I've got probably gotten 15 to 20 copies of the Fire Unigami from fi from farming Feymon. So uh, they'll drop for sure if you're in there for a little bit, all right? And then the last tip that I can think of that I want to give you is Secret Dungeons. Secret, you, you can get a couple of really important champs from Secret Dungeons. And when you're new to the game, you're going to have all of your attribute dungeons open for 30 days so it's a really good time to take advantage of this uh, the way that it works is when you farm in a tribute dungeon you have a, a small chance of opening a secret dungeon which is where these will sit and you can go in here there's 10 there's 10 waves of this champion depending on how far you get determines how many fragments of the champion you get and then uh, i think for three stars you need 40 maybe you need 40 for everyone i don't know maybe it's 20 for two star and 40 for three star either way it's very easily completed uh, even if you can't beat stage 10 every time you'll get up to four frags per run depending on how far you get and then when you get enough frags you can summon a champ some important ones to try to take advantage of i would recommend getting into the light the hall of light often if you don't have a secret dungeon open for hall of light i would say farm it until one opens uh, pay attention to your friend list pay attention to chat which we'll talk about in a second but if we go drop info and go down to the Hall of Light, we can see our secret dungeon possibilities here. The the Light Unugami is incredible. Absolutely incredible champ. Your top priority, I would say, from here. Bella is usable just about everywhere in the game. Just a killer, killer champ. Another very useful one is the Vagabond. His name is Darian when he's awakened. He is also really, really helpful. I think he's really good in rifts. He was really good in rifts when I stopped playing. He can be really, really helpful in getting through Giants B10 the first time. Like, he can be part of a, of a Giants team in the higher stages. He's really, really good. He can, he can be helpful. Light Cowgirl is fantastic as well. Amon used to be really cool. I don't know how usable he still is, but but he used to be a good one to keep an eye out for. Um, and then the other ones I don't know a ton about. But if you see an Inugami dungeon, you need to hit it. You need to make sure you hit it. And then you can skill up, you can skill up Bella with copies of Rauk, with, with other elements of Inagami. You don't have to farm a bunch for skill ups. If you wanted to farm multiple, go for it, but it's not absolutely necessary. But those are very important. The, the sooner you can get your hands on these two champs especially, the better off you're gonna be. So I would farm until I open up a secret dungeon. If it's one I want, great. If it's not, wait the hour till it goes away, farm another one because you can only have one open yourself at a time. That's the way it used to be anyway. You can also keep an eye on chat because it will tell you when people unlock. Hopefully we've got one in here. It'll tell you. Yeah, here we go. 
It'll tell you when people unlock a secret dungeon and you can just request to enter it. You used to have to add them to your friends list and it was kind of a, a big deal. Um, now, not so much. You can just request to enter. So keep an eye on chat, keep an eye on your guild chat. Uh, anybody on your friend list, I think you'll automatically have access to their secret dungeons. It might work the same way with guild members, I don't know. Just keep an eye on chat if you're looking for one specifically. And uh, really make the most of having that light dungeon open for 30 days. 30 days is plenty of time to get every secret dungeon that you need on your own. But also keep an eye on chat because you may be able to knock it out a little bit quicker, okay? So that's all I really got off the top. From what I can remember, <coughs> and what I've experienced playing through the game uh, at, uh, on a new account, a fresh new account these days, those are those are the, all the things that I can think of that I that I think are, are pretty handy. I'm sure there's some things I didn't touch on. I'm sure there's some things I don't know about yet because again, a lot has changed in the game. So if you have any tips that you want to add to what I've said or any adjustments you want to make to what I've said, please drop them in the comments below. I would greatly appreciate it, as would everyone else, I'm sure. Other than that, I'm getting out of here. I do hope it was helpful, and we'll see you later.